Look at these beautiful parts. We're here in Aztec Precision in Ulverston in the Lake District. And I'm amazed at the amount of parts they're doing. Now, Eddie was saying they do, so these are micro machine components, which are mostly for the interconnect sector, which I didn't know is, is, is connectors. So if you're making connectors, generally what do you have? It's sliding heads. So they've got uh, 20 star machines here now. And look at the different types of parts they're making. These are, I didn't realize connectors came in this many different types. Um, they've got through holes, they've got uh, threads, they've got solder cups, they've got nil finishes. They go from what I saw, 0.3 millimeter OD uh, part up to they do some massive connectors, which you can't even see the biggest ones here. And they were they were about they were about this thick, probably the ones like up here. And those must, those must take a hell of a lot of current to be so huge. Uh, again, materials, we're talking copper, beryllium copper, gold plated steels, uh, coppers, aluminiums, brass. And actually, we've been talking to a couple of the operators and they've been running the new Star SX20. And they're now cutting a, a material called Monel and also Inconel. So Monel's a bit like an Inconel. Let's move on, let's keep going. So what I found interesting as well is it's not just the machining of the components these guys do here. There's a lot of operations they have to do post-processing as well. So and what they've got here is uh, they've got a lot of different areas that do uh, hood, uh, hooding of the connectors. So they need to bring the connectors in um, to achieve a good fit. Now this is a, an automated system here that does the hooding and it also does weight testing. So checking that the, that the connectors have got the right fit, uh, which you get on the data sheet for these connectors. And they've also got a, hello Chris, how are you doing? So we've also, they also do some zone annealing here. So Chris, so Chris right here is putting in the connector. Uh, he's, he's heating up the crimp part. It's cooling it down slowly. And then uh, it means that when someone crimps it, it's not brittle and they get a good crimp on that connector. I didn't realize there was so much that goes into these tiny components. Then here is the second operations department. So here they do a lot of the manual um, operations. So they do, again, when they can't do the automated hood fitting to the connectors, they do manual hood fitting. And also you do quite a lot of the weight testing. So uh, they also do a lot of hand deburring here as well. There's, there's a lot that goes into these tiny little parts. And these guys are doing volumes in excess of hundreds of thousands. So they do about 600,000 components a month straight out of these machines. And you can see the amount of equipment, the amount of inspection equipment that they, they've got here, and the amount of hand, uh, hand processing equipment. So there's, there's a lot that happens to these crimps just as they come out, uh, a lot of these connect connectors just as they come out of the machine, and then all the secondary operations that go with it. So there's a lot of value that gets added to the parts even after they've been machined. Again, because they're working in regulated industries like defense and aerospace, they need to get clean, so they've got a cleaning bath over there. And then the most important, the most critical part of this connectors, uh, making these connectors is inspection. So here's the inspection department. They've got uh, two Vici Vision um, inspection systems, optical inspection systems. So here is, is it Peter? Yep. Hello, Peter, how are you doing? So could you just please explain to me what, um, what you guys do here in the inspection department? Hello. What you guys do in the inspection department and what kind of tolerances you're looking at and what kind of features you inspect? Yeah, uh, we went to tight tolerances plus a minus a thou. Uh, 0.025 millimeters. We check, verify everything before it goes out to the customer. We do fair reports, which is the first article inspections, which are required by customers uh, before the, we can allow to ship the product. We do uh, feature reports, which go with the goods to demonstrate that everything complies with the drawing where it's supposed to. Uh, so do you have to inspect every single part that goes out of these doors? We check every part, but not individually. We work to uh, an ISO standard, which says if you have 5,000 parts, you must take 125 and check 125 pieces. Uh, and it works like that. We work to the standards. We do make it up as we go along. Yeah, exactly. So, so you guys are obviously, are you guys ISO 9001 certified, I assume? Yes, 9100. Brilliant. And also, so you've got the two Vici optical inspection systems and you've got a shadow graph here yep. working in tandem. Now, Correct. where do you find the shadow graph? I guess it still has its place, but what are the benefits of the, of the optical inspection over just using a manual shadow graph? Time. Time. So it's a, time is it literally time. So, so you get better accuracy and also the quicker cycle time. Yes. Correct. We still use the uh, shadow graph. We use shadow graph for internals. Because the shadow graph, you can look inside it where you can't on the VT machines. Okay, uh, but but you get a much quicker cycle time just on the, on the outer diameters and also and the and the, and the, the external features. Yeah. What kind of uh, how many features a second can you expect on these? There's one there where there's 127 features, uh, which has to be measured on a part, 
and it does it in around 35 seconds. That is incredible, isn't it? Which it is. It would take us on a manually at least an hour to, yeah. check, so, that, to check it manually. So there's no way a human could ever inspect at that, that, that speed? No, correct. Okay, brilliant. And what size, before you had a fantastic part on here, and what that was a tiny little part. Could you explain what, how, how big that part was, please? Yeah, it's about two to three millimetres long, uh, maybe half a millimetre diameter. Uh, I can show you some, if yeah. you want to take a better look. So if we have a quick look here, you guys have got, you've got something in your hand right here, Peter. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to see what you're going to be showing us, because... The, amount, the, the diversity in the connector parts here is absolutely fascinating. And you need to invest in that inspection equipment to make sure that, look at these, look, look at these parts here. I'll tell you, they're so tiny uh, that we have to put them under a, a microscope and magnify it up to 25, 50 times to be able to see them. Because you, you can only make as good as you can measure. Correct. Brilliant. So you have to invest in the optical equi equipment um, and also the, obviously the, old, the slightly older shadow graph technology to make sure that actually the parts that are coming off those, those star machines are good. Yeah, yeah, these are good. We have uh, a camera inside there. We've got a USB port. We can take that. We can take pictures. We can photograph. We can build up a library. Brilliant. And I remember talking to Julie. I think she was the one who machine. Who she was the one who programmed yeah, this part. Was, actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we're going to go and interview Julie in the, in the shop floor in, in a couple of minutes. I remember her saying she started off with this was about a minute and forty cycle time from to make one of these little parts. Now she's got it down to twenty eight seconds. seconds. Yeah. Twenty eight seconds. And we're going to go and find out exactly how she did that. Thank you very much, Pete. You're more than welcome. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank right. You then. Then. Let's go. So inspection department again. It's very exciting. But what I find a little bit more interesting, but just as important as the inspection department is the machining. Let's go have a look at the machine machine workshop. Actually, no, let's go to materials first. So let's go have a quick look at materials. Sorry, I've confused Chris there. So what I love also about this place is how clean it is, how tidy it is. There's so much, so many, oh, Julie's over there. Julie, I thought you were gonna be on the machine. Oh no, it's okay. Um, we'll, we'll come to you, in, no, it's all right. Look, we'll come and find you a little bit later. So what I love is also the storage here. These guys, I know exactly what they're doing when it comes to engineering management. Look at all this. You've got all your different materials, you've got all your different diameters. Everything down here is fantastically stored. You know where everything is. I think it makes it a little bit easier that because this is just a sliding head machine shop, I guess all the bars are the same, diameter, uh, same length. Um, so it's quite easy to sort. Whereas if you've uh, got a subcontract machine shop, you'll probably run in, you've got loads of different square parts all around the place, so really easy to store materials. Um, this is just goods in here. What I found amazing as well is Eddie was talking about how they've, do, they've got an order book fully filled three months in advance, then three months after that, the order book is half filled, but they're still looking at parts and materials, ordering materials for a year in advance from now. So these guys are obviously doing really well, and it's probably because of these the star sliding head machines and they've invested, they've got 20 across the shop floor. So Chris, if you have a quick look down there, look at this, 20 machines down the shop floor and one of them down there on the left, you can't quite see it from here, is 20 years old and it's still making good parts. He said it's still absolutely uh, beating those tolerances, that they, those tight tolerances that these guys need to make these connectors. And it's, it's absolutely fascinating as well. Whenever you go to a sliding head shop, you always see green lights across the board. There's a few orange here that are flashing, meaning I think they said some of the bar feeders need topping up, but it's amazing how automated these are as long as you dial in those processes. So again, investing in star machines, making sure that their, their processes are as automated as possible. Um, they're, making, they're making really good parts day in, day out, and they're absolutely fascinating, these parts. We've also done a little interview with Julie, which she's on a lunch break right now, so I'm not gonna go in, I'm not gonna interrupt her, but this was on the Star SX38. Now this is one of Star's brand new machine tools, which is, it's a little bit different, because they've got uh, a third head, which is a bit like a fixed head, um, which you can rough on the fixed head, and then uh, finish on the little, um, on the tool pots that above it. And it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating new machine for Star, which is completely different in, in terms of its capabilities. You can do much bigger diameters, uh, and also do, you can also machine on a subspindle, you can do drilling, you can do turning on the subspindle, which you never be, you're never never able to do before. So that's, again, that's a brand new machine from Star, the SX38, that Aztec have been investing in to try and get into new markets to make connector back shells, not just the connectors, to make connector back shells as well, so they can get the full kit for that connector um, in, in aerospace and defense, in all these highly regulated sectors. So I don't know about you, but I've learned so much today coming around the shop floor. It's a fan fascinating place. Uh, it's Aztec Precision in, in Ulverston, the Lake District. 
It's absolutely beautiful surroundings. And again, what a fantastic advert for Star. I'm, I'm continually impressed by the machine shops that run these machines and also just the extra op operations that go into these parts as well. I think it's, uh, it's a lovely place to be. Um, I'm fascinated by, the, by this technology and uh, I hope you are too. That's been our 10 minute tour.